Our top story tonight, a scenic train ride along Lake Washington comes to a screeching halt for hundreds of passengers. A live report. A major sewage leak closes beaches to swimmers and clamors near Blaine. All of South Florida braces for Hurricane Aaron. I love Hank. I hate the smell. But why use a flowery cover-up? That's no way to freshen the air. This like sweeping dirt under a rug. And I'd never do that. The Glade Neutralizer with natural plant and herb extracts doesn't just cover up, it neutralizes for a natural freshness that's like opening a window. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> no offense, Hank. Don't just cover up, neutralize with Glade Neutralizer. Fresh from Glade, SC Johnson Wax. <laughs> Helpline. What's so special about Lemon Pine Sol? Lemon Fresh Pine Sol Cleaner has the grease-cutting power of lemon. The others don't. My cleaner sure smells lemony. Honey, try Lemon Fresh Pine Sol. There's no telling what you're smelling. I took the test and it came out negative, when in fact I found out two weeks later that I was actually pregnant. I was very shocked. When a home pregnancy test fails, the reason can be simple human error. I'm not sure if I did the test right. EPT is designed to help eliminate human error with one simple step and a splash guard to protect the results. It's easy to use even when you're nervous. A home pregnancy test should be accurate because it's, it's a major change in your life. EPT. So accurate we call it the error-proof test. The error-proof test. In 35 minutes, Jay welcomes tennis sensation Andre Agassi, Irene Bedard of Pocahontas, and comedian Jerry Swallow on NBC's Tonight Show. Your local news is next. It looks odd, but its effects could provide a major benefit to those suffering from heart disease. We'll explain. With the hydro races just around the corner, let's hope this fills the quota for blowovers. Forget the big screen. Batman doesn't hold a candle to this scene. A feeding frenzy makes our picture of the night. This is a reminder that staining your house can be a real pain. So do it as little as possible. Like every 10 years, with Eagle Hardware and Garden and Bear Stains. Bear Stains offer a unique oil and latex blend for 10-year durability. And Eagle offers 250 Bear products. Plus, Eagle experts to guide you through every phase of the job, from prepping to the finishing touches. So you'll stain once in 10 years. Because once is enough. Eagle Hardware and Garden. More of everything. Number one at 11, you're watching King 5 News. Coverage you can count on. With all the news for Western Washington, tonight's top story. And first alert weather. And now, King 5 News at 11. In any case, the train struck the, the vehicle, spun the vehicle around 180 degrees and put it on its side, as you see behind us. Three people are injured tonight as the Spirit of Washington dinner train is involved in yet another collision. Our top story in a minute, but first, this breaking news just in to King 5. Police have arrested the son of a Bellevue couple for allegedly murdering his parents and sister. 19-year-old Atif Ahmad Rafay was arrested along with another teenager, Glenn Sebastian Burns, in Vancouver tonight. The two are being held on warrants for three counts of first-degree aggravated murder. The bodies of Tariq Rafay, his wife and daughter, were found in their Bellevue home last summer. They had been bludgeoned to death. Mm. Now to our top story. Three people hospitalized tonight after a train struck their van near Bellevue. It was the spirit of Washington dinner train with several hundred people on board. King 5's Bill Prasad is live near Newcastle with details. Bill. Of those three people, two are hospitalized at this hour in satisfactory condition. The other man was treated and released at a local hospital earlier tonight. Now, if we look down at my feet, we can tell this police marking tells us that this is the rear side passenger side tire. If we walk forward, we'll see another set of police markings right here. These markings tell us that this is the van. This is where the van came to a halt, the front tire, when it the train collided with the van. Now, you can imagine what the passenger was thinking as he looked to his right and saw a train weighing several hundred tons about to strike the vehicle. 
It's the fourth accident in three years for the Spirit of Washington dinner train. The train was moving at about 25 miles per hour when it struck a large Ford van carrying three men. The vehicle spun completely around and landed on its side. Its occupants are carefully loaded onto an ambulance. One is in obvious pain. The engineer applied emergency braking, was blowing his whistle. There's some indication the vehicle driver may have been trying to back up or get out of the way, but we still need to talk to him. It was just two weeks ago that the dinner train hit a car in Redmond. No injuries here. Last year, it was a different story in Bellevue, when the train struck and killed a woman who was walking her dog. In 1992, in Kirkland, the train crushed this car. Miraculously, the driver did live. Here at this crossing on private property, there are no barrier arms, and this hedge makes it difficult for drivers to see the train. Elizabeth Bell has crossed these tracks more times than she can count in the last 15 years. She heard the collision. I heard a big smash, a big crunch, and I um, thought that it had hit a car, and I came outside, and, and it had. There were several hundred people on the train, but none of those people were hurt. In fact, the train continued on to Woodenville, and a few minutes ago, it crossed the tracks again on its way back to Renton. So once again, everyone on the train was okay. I'm Bill Prasad, reporting live near Bellevue. Well, Bill, any indication so early tonight about what could make the crossing a little safer for the drivers? There was one item that was talked about uh, between police officers, and that was possibly someone trimming these hedges. But uh, so far, no talk of installing any kind of barrier arms here. Mm -hmm. All right, Bill Prasad, live in Newcastle. Thank you. Uh, more details on our top story. Bellevue police still trying to determine why the van the van itself could not clear the tracks in time. On to other news. Raw sewage continues to pour into a harbor near Blaine tonight. Thousands of gallons of waste are contaminating the water and closing the beaches. King 5's Linda Brill joins us live near Blaine tonight, where progress is being made. Linda? Gene, what a mess they have on their hands here at Drayton Harbor near Blaine. A sewage main ruptured, and it's spewing about 200,000 gallons of raw sewage into the harbor every day. And the problem has been they weren't able to locate the spill until about two hours ago. The sewage spill began on Saturday. Untreated sewage from Blaine is pouring into the bay. So far, approximately 500,000 gallons of raw sewage have entered the harbor. Divers are on the scene tonight. They're groping in the murky water, trying to find the rupture. It's quite dark down there, and they're down about 50 feet, so the visibility is probably reduced to less than two feet. So they've had to kind of feel their way along the bottom to find out uh, where the line was. This sewage main broke once before, back in 1988. It was scheduled to be replaced this spring. Diver Jim Ranson finally found the rupture by 9 o'clock tonight. I was real happy to find it. I've been in the water all day, so. <laughs> and you felt with your hands? No, I had a light. I had a big light. About as bright as that one. They'll tie a float and repair it tomorrow morning. In the meantime, the health department has issued a warning. No swimming or clamming allowed in Drayton Harbor. Oh, for sure we're not going to be clamming for a while until it's safe. The ban on swimming and clamming could have an economic impact on this area. The major resort in the south end of this bay, Semiamu, and also there is a county park for swimming and clamming, and that will be closed as well. Reporting live near, ba near Blaine, I'm Linda Brill. Thank you, Linda. Well, throughout the evening tonight, the residents of South Florida have been packing up and heading out. Yeah, Hurricane Aaron is making a beeline for that coast. The storm's winds have been clocked at 70 mile, 75 miles an hour. The eye is centered about 340 miles southeast of Miami, moving at a clip of 10 miles an hour. At that rate, it'll hit land late tomorrow. Tonight, thousands of people who live in low-lying coastal areas are packing up and getting out. The state ordered the evacuation and open toll roads to keep traffic flowing. For inlanders who are staying put, the storm means stocking up on basic items, especially bottled water. We just got here like 20 minutes ago. We were picking up cases of water just when we came in the front door, and then they were gone. Others remembering the power of Hurricane Andrew went in search of plywood to reinforce their homes. The storm is following the same path Andrew took three years ago, but forecasters say Hurricane Aaron should not be as severe. Forecasters don't expect any more. An eerie revelation tonight into the search for the Green River killer.
Police tried just about everything to hunt down this country's worst serial killer, but he was never caught. Well, it turns out investigators consulted with notorious serial killer Ted Bundy after Bundy offered his services. The story is part of the book Riverman, ready to hit the store shelves in mid-August, written by Bob Keppel, a former King County detective who traveled to Florida's death row on numerous occasions to discuss the case with Bundy. Keppel's books at Bundy offered up ways to catch the man responsible for killing the 49 women. Bundy even made reference to some of his own actions, like going back to the crime scene, watching police removing evidence, and even moving body parts. Police plan to go high-tech in their search for a missing toddler. Divers searched the depths of the Skykomish River south of Monroe today, but they couldn't find any trace of 23-month-old Kaylee Alberts of British Columbia. Tomorrow, police will use an underwater camera to probe the riverbed. They can get into some areas that we couldn't get in, but uh, the little girl could get in. They can also show us uh, underneath some areas where we just couldn't, uh, couldn't reach. The baby disappeared during a family gathering at her uncle's Riverside home Saturday. Relatives think the child darted into the river after playing with some other children. Fire investigators continue their search for the arsonist who burned down a Seattle church. Investigators say they're now sifting through the information gathered from witnesses the night of the fire. According to officials, the arsonist deliberately set fire to a piano located at the back of the building. Witnesses claim they saw kids running from the area shortly before the fire broke out. They are following all the information and leads that they have, which is substantial, which is a credit to the community, really. Uh, and hopefully they'll be able to apprehend whoever is responsible for this. In the meantime, church leaders vow to rebuild the building. The full gospel Pentecostal community temple has been around for more than 30 years. Meantime, a 32-year-old laborer is behind bars tonight, held in connection with a spate of arsons at Shoreline's Echo Lake Apartments. Arson investigators arrested the suspect Friday after five separate blazes were set in his building this month. King County Police claim a fingerprint on the scene linked him to the crimes. The white male is being held in lieu of $25,000 bail. He has prior convictions for arson, theft, and controlled substance violations. The Senate Ethics Committee refuses to hold public hearings on sexual misconduct charges against Senator Bob Packwood. GOP committee members prevailed today by keeping the controversial hearing behind closed doors. The committee's Democrats voted for an open hearing on the charges against the Oregon Republican. The committee members did agree on one thing, that all documents from the Packwood hearing be released to the public. L.A. prosecutors say they're prepared to show that O.J. Simpson had worn the gloves used in the murders of his ex-wife and her friend. The district attorney's office could present NBC sports clips to prove it to the jury. Can you establish a foundation that those gloves are the same gloves? Yes, I can. Interesting. The gloves did not appear to fit Simpson when he tried them on in court. They were too small. Authorities say the gloves were blood-soaked and they shrunk. But there's a chance the jury will not hear another word about the gloves. The prosecution can't bring up the issue unless the defense brings it up first. Well, drug enforcers were in western Washington with the hope of the thought that a big cash reward is enough to convince residents to turn in neighbors who are growing marijuana. The Washington State Patrol and the DEA are teaming up to advertise a toll-free 1-800 number that you can call to report somebody you think is growing pot. The confidential tips that we've received from the phone line over this hotline has led to more than just marijuana grow operations. We've even covered uh, cocaine and also heroin operations as well. There are critics of this hotline like those here at the Fremont Hemp Company, which legally sells all kinds of things made from I cannabis. I would call it somewhere between McCarthyism and Nazism, turning your neighbor because of what they believe or what it appears they believe or what it appears they're doing. So here's the toll-free number. If you would like to call somebody about it, it's 1-800-388-GROW. That's 1-800-388-GROW. Officials at Harborview Medical Center want to move the hospital's helicopter launching pad, the landing pad, but many people who live near the hospital don't like that plan. Four potential helipad sites have been proposed by King County. All are close to the current pad, but would provide more direct access to the emergency room. Residents at the Jefferson Terrace Public Housing High Rise oppose moving the helipad closer to their building. They say the noise and fumes would be intolerable. But the residents here can't afford to just move on a whim. They're low-income people and can't afford that process. So they're stuck with it no matter what happens. Harborview will hold a number of public meetings on the helipad location. Up next on King 5 News, it looks weird, but it possibly benefits those who are sick.
we'll show you. Firefighters come to the rescue of a dog who was tied to the back of a moving truck. And a new breed of boat turns heads in Chesapeake Bay. All these stories coming up. And perhaps you have summer vacation this week. Is it going to be summer-like? Our forecast just ahead. Coming up later on The Tonight Show, beat the heat with some cool comedy and find out how Andre Agassi courted Brooke Shields. You faxed Brooke Shields? No, she faxed me first. She faxed you? Talk it's about safe sex, man. <laughs> Plus the voice of Pocahontas, Irene Bedard, comedian Jerry Swallow, and headlines. So get comfy and stay up for Jay, followed by an all-new Conan NBC Tonight. Hi, John Keister here with racing legend Chip Hanauer to tell you why this Seafair, no one should be without a Motorola cellular phone. Hey, Keister, you want to see my speedboat? Yeah, in a second, Chip. You see, right now, Motorola's great line of digital messaging megaphones are on sale at the Bon Marche for their lowest price ever. Hey, Keister, you want to In a second, Chip, okay? And also, if you sign up with US West Cellular before August 7th, the Bon Marche is going to waive the $40 activation fee. Hey, Keister. Fee. All right, let's see the speedboat, right. Chip. Let's see the speedboat. <laughs> you know, some guys never grow up. <laughs> Introducing the 1995-96 Key Banks Broadway of the Paramount Series. The Phantom of the Opera returns to Seattle. An all-new West Side Story. The Pointer Sisters Ain't Misbehaving. Broadway's an Inspector Calls. And the Tony Award-winning How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. Call 292 Arts and be a part of the new Key Banks Broadway of the Paramount Series. Why do more Honda owners come back to Honda? Car after car after car. It could be state-of-the-art engine technology, or extraordinary handling, or maybe it's the feeling that Honda is one car maker that won't let you down. Heart disease is a leading cause of death in this country. But now technology pioneered in China holds promise for many patients here. At first glance, you wonder how this can save lives. But the experimental therapy is proving wonders for angina patients suffering chest pains that come from clogged arteries in the heart. A New York specialist used it on 100 patients. 75% improved. None got worse. It looks kind of silly and too good to be true. But it is true. We've had fantastic results. The device is timed to the beating heart. When the heart's resting, cuffs on the legs and abdomen squeeze extra blood into the heart. Over time, it leads to increased blood flow. I'd walk a block without chest pain. I, could, I couldn't do it. When I left, I could walk a mile, two miles with no chest pain. And what's most impressive, the procedure called EECP costs just $7,000. That compares to $22,000 for angioplasty, 44,000 for heart bypass surgery. The University of Washington is participating in a study that recently discovered injections of testosterone may act as birth control for men. The World Health Organization is coordinating the study. It found that weekly injections of the hormone reduced sperm counts and yielded less than a 2% chance of pregnancy over a year's time. Los Angeles County firefighters rescued a dog this afternoon, but not from a burning building, from the back of a moving truck. When the German Shepherd mix refused to get into his owner's truck, the man drove off with the dog tied to the back. The animal was dragged almost a mile before a fire truck forced the driver to pull over. It looked like it was about two feet long, and his eyes looked like they were already bug out of his head. The dog was thoroughly thrashed. His claws were worn away, bloody paws. Mouth of foam, he was in a real bad way. No kidding. The dog is recovering, and his owner's being held on $15,000 bond. A mega merger between two entertainment giants tops our news briefs tonight. Capital City's ABC has been purchased by the Walt Disney Company. The deal is the second largest corporate takeover in U.S. history. Transaction is worth a whopping $19 billion. Disney owns multi-million dollar theme parks and produces blockbuster animated films. The ABC Empire boasts eight TV stations and 225 affiliates. The British parents of a brain-damaged child have lost their battle to end their son's life. 22-month-old Thomas Creedon is blind, deaf, and has frequent seizures. His family wants to disconnect his feeding tube and let him die. Today, a judge rejected their appeal and put the child under the court's protection. 
Chicago's mayor is urging all residents to check on elderly neighbors and relatives as the city swelters yet another heat wave. The message appears to be getting through. Hundreds have retreated to 24-hour cooling centers. The, the sweat was just pouring down my forehead, down into my eyes. My eyes were burning. Temperatures soaring into the 90s, and 16 people have been hospitalized with heat-related illnesses. No one has died this time from the heat in the past few days. You don't have to wait until this weekend to get a glimpse of a seafaring vessel. Up next, a King 5 News preview of the aircraft carrier Kitty Hawk. And visit a bat cave that even Bruce Wayne would make even Bruce Wayne shiver. That's later in our picture of the night. Discover your Northwest with Evening Magazine. She was the innocent victim of a drive-by shooting. My friend that was sitting next to Tina. She said, oh my God, Tina's been shot. See if you can help the family catch her killer and end their pain. Plus, residents want this man off their beach. I'm not for thongs on anybody. Is he offensive or the victim of discrimination? Evening Magazine, Tuesday at 7 on King 5. It's a Volvo wagon. Circuit City's got unbeatable computer savings every day. And that means there's no better place to buy your new computer. Get unbeatable low prices on all the top brands. And right now, during Circuit City's Computer Expo and sale, get 0% interest for 90 days on every computer. Plus, get a free Windows 95 upgrade on every IBM-compatible computer. Get a $200 price break on this AST multimedia computer with $550 software package, just $1399.97. Now's the time to save. Hurry into Circuit City's Computer Expo and sale. Going on now. No one else offers side impact airbags at this price. Then again, no one else offers them. King 5 First Alert School Net is sponsored in part by your local John Deere dealer. This is King 5 First Alert Weather. I hope you've had an opportunity to get outdoors. We've had a beautiful crescent moon over the Puget Sound area the last couple of nights. And both the planets Jupiter and Saturn. Saturn right now in the eastern sky are very prominent and very pretty. 68 degrees. Some are like temperatures to go outside. The pollen count low. Also some good news there. In Tacoma, the tower cam there is picking up 68 degrees. A little bit further to the north up in Everett, we're checking in at... 63 degrees, winds off the water out of the northwest at 7 miles an hour, not picking up any precipitation on radar. So instead, we're going to look at school net temperatures, and we'll show you that high temperatures today, very pleasant, ranging from 77 in Linwood to 82 degrees in Puyallup and Tumwater, 84 out in Issaquah. But how about right now? Now, pulling back to our current school net observation stations, we'll see the current temperatures are ranging from 57 in Pacific Beach on up to, well, 69 degrees in Lacey, 73 degrees up in Lake Chelan, but another one of the warmer places as of this hour. Olympic Junior High in Auburn, 65 degrees. A little bit of a change, but a subtle one over the next couple of hours. Looking at our latest series of satellite pictures, we'll see these clouds mainly moving to the north over the Queen Charlotte's, the north end of Vancouver Island, and the interior of British Columbia. That is just going to brush us enough to shift us from a dry, warm offshore flow to a little bit. Notice the words a little bit. Onshore flow of some ocean air. So our forecast for tonight, low temperatures are going to be ranging from 50 degrees in Olympia to 56 degrees in Seattle. Then tomorrow, look for a few areas of low morning clouds, chiefly from Oak Harbor westward. High temperatures tomorrow from 62 in Oak Harbor on up to 80 in Olympia and Tacoma. If you're headed east to the Cascades, high temperatures over there from 83 in Pullman on up to 94 in the Tri-Cities. Slight chance of an afternoon thunder shower in or near the Spokane area. Lots of low clouds along the ocean beaches, especially tomorrow afternoon, if not before. Expect small craft advisories in the Strait of Juan de Fuca. 15 to 30 miles an hour there, as far as wind speeds are concerned. 10 to 25 along the coast. And up in the mountains, sunny skies. Afternoon pass temperature 65 to 72 degrees. Westerly winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Five-day outlook, well, who wouldn't want to look at this? Mostly sunny skies Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Some areas of low morning clouds, probably an increase in low morning clouds on Saturday, but partly sunny in the afternoon. High temperatures, upper 70s to low 80s. But what about this complete 
This complete Seafair weekend, yeah. I'll say it a third time, this complete Seafair weekend, Saturday and Sunday both, low morning clouds, partly to mostly sunny in the afternoon, and very comfortable temperatures, highs in the mid-70s to right around 80 degrees. You know, they plan this big event of the Seattle summer for this weekend, because typically it's when we get our best summer weather, and it looks like this is going to be very comfortable and very nice weather. And you're not out. making this up? Uh, well, I do in the sense of a scientific forecast, but in terms of tossing darts, I save that for special occasions. <laughs> okay. Not tonight. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Whatever it is, we like it. Okay. At more than 1,000 feet long, it is one of the biggest ships in the U.S. Navy's fleet. And soon you'll be able to see it at Seafair. King 5 News flew out to the aircraft carrier Kitty Hawk today as it makes its way up the Washington coast on its way to Everett and Seattle. The ship is due in at the Everett home port by noon tomorrow, then it heads to Seattle on Wednesday with thousands of sailors on board. We're looking forward to arriving in Seattle. I think it's going to be a great time in Seattle. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of things planned, and the crew is really looking forward to it. The Kitty Hawk will be one of six ships here for Seafair and will be on tour. Some of those ships accompanied the carrier up from San Diego. The Navy is also testing a strange-looking new vessel in Chesapeake Bay. The 26-foot experimental boat was put into the water for the first time today. It weighs 12 tons, costs almost $800,000, and can reach speeds of up to 30 knots in rough water, 37 knots on a calm sea. Especially when it's in the water. That's why when it's actually in <laughs> The Mariners bolster their pitching staff, trading for one of the best in the business. Also a spectacular finish for a driver who was able to walk away in one piece. Carlos explains next. Should battered women seek refuge in the workplace? The receptionist knew to call the police if they saw my husband come through the door. I don't feel that your place of work then should become a sanctuary from this yo-yo that you decided to marry. But some corporations make helping a company policy. Until you've done everything you can to help them, you're not doing your job. Is it your boss's job to protect your life? That's so funny. Tomorrow at 4 on King 5. You could play in the rain. You could frolic in the snow. And when the sun shines, you could peel off the rest of your inhibitions. The Saab 900 Convertible. Find your own road. Saab. The worst phone bill you'll ever receive is heading your way. A bill to reform telecommunications law. I guess Congress thinks reform means no real competition for Bell monopolies, no choices for us, and higher prices for local phone service. Excuse me, don't you want real choices, better service, and lower prices? Call 1-800-999-4744. Tell Congress to say no to the bill and no to monopolies. <laughs> Well, it's that time of year. You gotta <laughs> get ready for the close out of the season. Uh, if they only knew what went on in the commercials. Anyway, what were you gonna say? Well, we're eager to hear from you, Carlos. What's the most important thing a baseball team needs? Besides, a bunch besides, of trades, besides, I guess. besides money and a new stadium. No, besides most pitching. Everybody needs pitching. Okay. And guess what the Mariners did? I'll tell you. Why not? Welcome to Let's Make a Deal. The trading deadline in baseball came and went. And guess what? The Mariners did actually make a trade. Woody Woodward said the M's have acquired one of the premier starting pitchers in the National League. All together now, let's welcome San Diego Padre, now Seattle Mariner, Andy Bennis. Bennis is 27 years old, has a 4-7 and seven record, but don't let that fool you. He has a 4.17 ERA and 19 starts for the Padres. He's also second in the National League in strikeouts and starts, but Bennis is good but has been very unhappy with the Padres, and he should actually help the Mariners. The Mariners did give up pitcher Ron Ballone, 25 years old, and the M's first-round pick in 1992, and Big Mark Newfield, a 22-year-old outfielder and who was the number one pick in 1990. Five total trades on tonight's Let's Make a Deal deadline all involve pitchers. The Rockies obtained Brett Saberhagen from the Mets. The Reds got David Wells from the Tigers. The Red Sox got Mike Stanton from the Braves. And the Dodgers, they got Kevin Tappany from the Twins. The Mariners and their new pitcher, Mr. Bennis, open a three-game series with the Angels tomorrow in California. But tonight in Baltimore, the Orioles actually got a huge game from Cal Ripken Jr., who belted two home runs, but the Orioles wasted his effort. The Blue Jays responding with some nice defense. Candy Maldonado with the leaping catch as the Jays beat the Orioles by a final of 6-3. to three. Another 
action in the National League. Only one of the game. The White Sox beat the Royals 6-4. to four. In New York, the Pirates, John Warner, not very happy about striking out. But not at all. But the Mets' Rico Borgna was plenty thrilled with his shot to left field. Actually, that's right field. I don't care what they tell me. A two-run homer, helping the Mets to a 4-1 to win over the Pirates. Over the National League scores, the Padres down the Astros. The Rockies edged the Expos. And the Cardinals and Marlins, the game was rained out. Meantime, Hall of Famer and former Yankee Mickey Mantle was readmitted to Baylor University Medical Center. A chemotherapy treatment caused unpleasant side effects, so he's resting back in the center until tomorrow. Let's go to the practice field because the Hawks continue to be besieged by football injuries. The latest casualty, linebacker Bob Spitelsky. Now, he'll likely miss nine weeks due to a torn patella as another Seahawk goes down. I mean, anytime you lose a guy, it hurts. I mean, it's... Uh... You know, he's involved in special teams and so forth. When you lose people, as time goes on, you start losing other people. That's when it becomes a, a much more serious thing. And right now, we're all right because we've got some depth there. But it's a problem. Meantime, Seafair is not a problem, and it's coming. And so are the Hydros who begin practice runs on Lake Washington later this week. Something that hopefully won't happen on Lake Washington is this flip of the Gold Coast in Australia. Speedboat driver Jim Thompson catches some air and breaks apart going over 100 miles an hour. Amazingly enough, and we always like to say this, Thompson actually walked away from the crash and onto the shore uninjured. Olympic gold in Atlanta won't be handed out until next summer, but it's a different story in Des Moines, Iowa. That's where more than 12,000 teens are going for the gold in the Junior Olympics. The top junior athletes from across the U.S. are competing in 27 different events. Medals are given to the top six finishers, and the competition will run through Sunday. Running Monday through Friday, our own Mr. Video Awards with... We like to call it Happened Tonight. Happened Tonight in New York for med pitcher Bob Fusilla, in fact, got a little confused. Strikes out Orlando Morissette to end the inning, but, well, he actually just done, didn't realize it. Thankfully, his teammates let him know the inning was over and eventually made his way back to the dugout. It Happened Tonight in Ohio, the Cubs got bullet with a couple of home runs and also robbed Tigers Danny Batista of a one with a great catch right there as the Cubs won the Hall of Fame game 8-6. It all happened right here on King's Fight Sports. In fact, congratulations to Mike Flowers of the Mariners, who was named American League Player of the Week for the first time in his career. Also, the Rainiers beat Albuquerque, while the Aqua Sox, they crushed Eugene, 13-3. Yeah. to three. They've won a bunch of games recently. Yes, they are. On, they're on a roll. Like 10 out of 12 or That's something right. like that. That's yeah. right. What do you think about that? I think I missed you a lot while I was gone, so I'm glad we're I all back together. I love when you say that. I missed, I missed you too. It's nice to see you around. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice to be back. All right. Picture the night coming up next. But first, tonight's winning daily lottery number. The new Mervins now open at the corner of Union Hill and Avondale Road in Redmond. Of the 10 most fuel efficient car models tested by the EPA, five were Honda Civics. Hugh delayed. IntelliChoice recognized six Civic models as having the best overall values in their respective classes. You deliberated. Then came the Honda 95 clearance lease for just $149 a month for 24 months. How shrewd of you. Timing is everything at your Honda dealer. Well, the thoughts of a bat cave usually conjure up images of Batman, Robin, and Bruce Wayne. Sure, but in Mason, <laughs> Texas, you don't need to go to the movies to see bats. The nightly feeding frenzy is our picture of the night. Every summer evening, six million bats and their offspring leave their cave for hours to forage for moths. Tourists flock to the area to witness the fascinating flight of the Mexican free-tailed bats. The huge mammal colony consumes several hundred thousand pounds of insects every night. So Jump. it's a bad sign if they show up at your house. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> We've had that. We've had that. Bats. I went wild in the bedroom about 2 o'clock in the morning. Went to turn on the light. Much to my amazement, what flies over my head? A but a bat. 
Are you going to oh. do? Are you going to do the weather? You like that imitation? <laughs> I think I'd be better off doing the weather as a matter of fact. <laughs> We're looking for some areas wow. of low morning clouds, 50 to 59 degrees, but partly to mostly sunny in the afternoon. High temperatures in the 70s. Carlos is speechless as well. He should be, and as well as I should be now too. <laughs> what do they say gets in your belfry occasionally? <laughs> uh, I think perhaps that one left a side effect in mind. Yes. <laughs> You may need shots. Well, <laughs> thanks, Jeff. That's it for us. Aren't you grateful? <laughs> Good night. We'll be back tomorrow. Good night.